Okay. All right. So, um, happy Monday. Fourth week. Good luck on all your midterms and all your other classes. And uh, I got some uh, stuff to say. So you need to have your groups established by this Friday. And if you don't have them established by this Friday, I will just stick you into a group, okay? I'll just uh, assign assign you to an arbitrary group, and it may or may not be <laughs> with people you know or don't know. Um, but uh, but uh, you do need to be in a group. So so there is a thread on Campus Wire where people are kind of finding groups and stuff, um, and that's hopefully that's uh, that will be uh, helpful or useful. Um, you know what we can do? We can also, I guess we can uh, just remind me maybe <laughs> to take a little bit of time and I'll just give you guys a few minutes at the end of today also to just talk to some of your neighbors and uh, and try to find a group if you haven't found a group. Um, I've uploaded. So project requirements and guidelines, That's um, that's been up. I also uploaded this past weekend the proposal meeting grading rubric. Um, and so, you know, your proposal meeting, it's what, 30 points, so that's about 10% of your final project grade, but it is graded, and, um, and I want to make sure everybody is aware of the criteria that I will use for grading, okay? And so basically, I've got a few different categories, and I'm going to, you know, we meet, and during the meeting, I'm going to kind of give you either a rating of good, basic, or needs improvement, okay? Yeah, so basic meaning like it meets the requirements but doesn't <laughs> impress me, out. okay? Yeah, nothing stands out. So, you know, not great, not terrible, okay? <laughs> um, and so I've tried to be thorough in what it is that I'm expecting uh, as far as good goes. And then I've also listed um, just examples of mistakes that student groups have made. Uh, regarding you know kind of picking their data and things like that um, and and I want you to kind of just avoid these situations uh, even if you can't get good in every single category like if you kind of go through and you're like you know what <laughs> um, this is a good data set that we want to work with but you know we're gonna end up in the basic category for this one thing that's fine you can still kind of work with it all right even if like one of your categories ends up, or like during the meeting, um, you know, I might ask, well, I'm going to ask a bunch of questions and you might not be able to answer them or something and I might rate you needs improvement. That doesn't eliminate you and say, or not, there's no elimination of groups, but just like, it doesn't mean you can't use that, it doesn't mean you can't use that um, data set or something, okay? But these are questions, um, I guess part of this and, and this whole thing is to help you, I guess, start looking at data with a little bit of a critical eye. Um, because if you just kind of say, oh, oh, here's a data set, and let's start analyzing it without really kind of questioning where it's coming from and what you can do with it, um, you, you can be easily <laughs> doing a bad analysis, right? If, if you have garbage coming in, it doesn't matter what kind of analysis you do, it, it's not going to be good. So, um, so you know, here's, I, I, I looked, um, I did some examples and, you know, again, you know, some of these data sets, they're, they're good data sets. It's just perhaps not appropriate to use for the class. So, for example, you know, one of them is this chronic kidney disease data. It's a, it's a good data set, but I don't think anybody of you are experts in chronic kidney disease. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of you are, but, um, but that's the thing, is that if you know nothing about it, um, your analysis is going to be hindered unless you pair up or team up with somebody who is an expert, right? So, you know, if you ever join some data science team, you need, you need to have one person, at least, who knows the, the subject matter may not be a data expert but knows the subject matter and so you know if you have access to something and or or if you're you're willing to do a whole bunch of kind of additional studying to learn about these kind of things like what's a good al albumin number or something um, sure uh, I'll allow it okay um, and other things is as you look at your data set you know um, basically 
during the project, what I want you to do is I want you to be able to explore interesting relationships between variables. And, um, and if you're not able to do that, um, I, I would prefer you use a different data set. So, so my hope is uh, this rubric um, is detailed enough uh, that you can figure out um, what it is that I'm looking for. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to come to office hours. Um, so by the end of week four, so during week five, I'll put up a, another sheet um, where you will kind of sign up for a, uh, a time slot during week six to, uh, to meet with me. Um, probably the proposal meetings we'll just do over Zoom. Um, so we'll meet via Zoom and, um, and then you'll tell me about your data and things like that. So that, that will take place during week six. But uh, you know, if you already have your group, you should start be looking around for data already. And then, um, uh, yeah, next week you can start signing up. Okay, questions before uh, I get into today's content? We're good? Okay, all right. So um, Friday I spent kind of the entire lecture talking about um, the project and certain ideas there. And I'll probably sprinkle in a little bit of um, more project guidelines and stuff. Um, but we didn't do uh, the lecture, which was on tidy data, so let's go ahead and do that. It says week three Friday, but it's week four Monday, and we'll go ahead and um, take a look. Okay, so tidy data, um, I'm working off of chapter six in our textbook. Uh, I hope you guys are keeping up with the uh, textbook reading, um, and that, that's also uh, important. And then I'll also um, I'll assign some additional data camp homework uh, this week. Okay. All right. So when we talk about uh, tidy data, it's kind of this idea of how should you structure your data? How should your data be arranged um, so that we can analyze and work with it? And the um, the idea behind tidy data is that um, you know every row contains just one observation. We might also call it a case. And every observation has its own row. So you're not going to have more than one observation in a row. Um, and you're not going to have one row spread out across multiple, or one observation spread out across multiple rows. Okay. Um, similarly, um, every column is only is going to have um, just one variable. And every variable has only um, one column, okay? And then every cell is a single value. Now, this can be um, kind of loosened, where within a cell, you can actually can have multiple values within a cell. For example, uh, like you could have like a short list or a vector within uh, a thing. It could be like um, the cell is titled. Um, could it be like height, then like CM versus. No, 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 no. More like. Uh, um, like for a movie, you could have a director, okay? And that director cell, like if it's one person, Martin Scorsese, it's just Martin Scorsese. But if it's like uh, the Russo br brothers, you know, Anthony and Joe, you might have two people within one cell, okay? Co-directors Co or things like that. So, so that is, um, so when we talk about one value in a cell, it could be actually like two things in there or something, D depending on the situation. Uh, some data sets will say, um, you know, we should have a second column. But, that, you know, I, I, would, I, uh, I would recommend if you're going to have like a directors, like in a cell, it should like, if there's multiple directors, they should all fit into one, right? Because you think of movies, most movies have one director. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes a movie has more than one director. And so sometimes people will approach this and say, oh, okay, you know what, we'll have a column for director one and a column for director two. And then you go, oh, well, you know, here's a movie that has three directors. Okay, so should we add a column for director three? Okay, now how many, how many movies will have an entry in the third director spot? Very few, right? I, I can't name any off the top of my head that has had three directors, but probably in the history of filmmaking, there have been a few movies where there's been three directors, right? And then eventually, as you keep going through your data, and depending on how many 
things you're looking at, you might come across a movie with four directors, right? And then what do you do? Okay, let's add a column for the fourth director, right? And you can see, like, you know, now now we're getting like I have kind of like <laughs> multiple columns that are kind of like uh, useless, <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, you know, how much analysis should I be doing, right? And then the question is, if you have multiple columns, like you've got director one and director two. Who should be listed as director one and who should be listed as director two? And, you know, the order of people getting listed in a movie, a lot of it is, you know, um, not necessarily how much work they've done, but like, a, you know, kind of there's a lot of just like, uh, I don't know, different forces at play. We'll just say that, right? As far as like who, who gets listed first in the, the casting and, and stuff like that. Like, for example, I think in uh, Superman or Superman 2 or something, do you know who got listed? Top, the, this is like the old Superman movies with Christopher Reeve. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, no, nobody from knows. A different yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it's not, these are also before my time, but these are like <laughs> classic <laughs> things and stuff. Classic films. Or, um, I don't know. Who, who should get. I don't know, but anyway, it's it's kind of like a or if you go to um, if you think of a movie and you say like okay, who should be listed number one? It's uh, it's 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 a little bit strange, especially if you have like an ensemble cast, right? And um, like uh, I don't know what's a what's what's a recent movie? Okay, like okay, so Avengers. any any of the Avengers films, right? Who should be listed number one? And you'd be like, ah, oh, I guess. I don't know Robert Downey Jr. or something, but then maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You know, it's like who's who's the most important character in some movie? You know, who gets listed as number one? It's it's a it's a bit of a weird thing. Okay, so um, anyway, that's uh, that's an exception here. But overall, <laughs> if you can just keep it simple, uh, one cell, one value. Um, if you might have in some situations, you might have multiple. Things listed off in one thing. You have a question, yeah? Did you publish the week four modules with the quiz? And Did I not do that? I probably. I'm not see it yet. You're right. I forgot to click this little. Published. There you go. Okay. Now it should be there. Access granted. Thank you. Okay. And I got to um, do this. Okay. So, um, all right. So here's an example. So a lot of times you go out and you find data, and, you know, different um, organizations and stuff will publish data and it might come out as an excel sheet and it looks like this and it's kind of like all right thank you for publishing your data all right we we appreciate when or in places publish their data but also this data just you can't just import this into r and start analyzing it like this this data kind of sucks all right and and the reason why is because you got Row 15, this is like a ward 1 subtotal, okay? And row 27 is a subtotal, which, okay, I understand why they're including this because they're, they're probably like printing this off and giving it to some executive or something and the executive wants to look at this and they just want to look at like some, some subtotals and stuff like that, um, fine. But as far as, you know, us who wants to um, analyze it, the, the, these entries you know, mess things up for us, okay? So we would have to remove these if we want to kind of make our data to, uh, uh, tidy. We'd have to remove row four. Um, you know, we'd have to do a little bit of additional cleanup, like remove the blank rows and stuff like that, okay? Um, and each row then would be a single case, which would be uh, one precinct within the ward. So I don't know, you know, it's a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know uh, how many cities are organized into wards. I guess those are like neighborhoods. I don't know, something kind of like that. But um, but we have that. Okay. Um, other uh, another thing I, I, before I keep going on um, is we do have to talk about like what variables are right. And variables basically, I said okay, each column in your data set is going to be a variable. Um, but basically, a variable is going to be something that can vary from one case to another case, right? If it's going to be the same for all cases, that's not a variable. So if you think of something like, um, what is 
uh, so imagine uh, you have um, in your data set you have players on a team okay you have players on a team and you're gonna have information about each player and then let's say you decide to calculate the team average average whatever average points or average this or that statistic that's going to be the same for every person on the team right because it's a team average so the team average is not a variable okay values that vary from one person to another one case to another those are variables so if you talk about like um, height that's going to vary from one person to an the next okay but the average height for the team is not a variable okay on the other hand if you have another data set where each row is a team okay and for whatever reason you're keeping track of the average height of each team that's going to vary from one row to another so that will be a variable so team average is a variable if each case is a team team average is not a variable if each case is an individual person on a team, right? And, th and that's an important thing that we have to start to recognize and distinguish, is that in certain situations, depending on what your case is, it can be a variable or it, it might not be a variable, okay? Um, as far as variables go, we have categorical and numeric or quantitative variables. Uh, these are kind of two broad categories of variables. Categorical variables record the type or the category they often take the form of a word, so it'll be something like, uh, what is someone's hair color? And we say their hair color is brown, or their hair color is black, or their hair color is blonde, or, you know, you might have different shades of brown, or, you know, you might have another category of people, you know, color or dye their hair, something, um, you know, unusual or things like that. Um, you can also uh, have, um, and then you have uh, numeric variables or quantitative variables, and these record some kind of numeric attribute. Now you have to tell us a quantity, like how much or how many. Now, some variables, like say zip code or area code, you know, your phone number area code, they look like numbers, but they are categorical variables, okay? So if, you, if we think about an area code, it doesn't re respond to a quantity. So um, it, it doesn't make sense to say Joe, who has area code 818, has more area code than Jane, who has area code 562, right? Even the way we read out an area code is a hint to us that it's, a, it's not numeric, right? Because otherwise we would have said uh, Joe has 818 and Jane has 562, right? That would imply that we could kind of compare these things and we'd say, oh, okay, Joe has, you know, uh, 200, uh, 256 more area code than Jane or something. But that, 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 that's not how, how it works, right? So just the fact that we read it out as 818 kind of indicates to us like, oh, you know what, this is not really a number, right? So you think about your zip codes, right? Beverly Hills 90210, like 90210, that's, um, is, is that still part of our cultural um, vocabulary? The Beverly Hills zip code or something? I would say so. Okay. Um, yeah, question. Yeah, could you explain again the, the quantitative variable as a... Explain height as a quantitative or a categorical variable. Not no, height is numeric. Height is a quantitative oh, okay. variable. Okay. So average team player height. A is not a variable. It's just a... a a, a summary. So, so okay. So, so height is numeric because you can take one person yeah, and say okay. this person is fifty-five okay. inches and this other person is sixty-five inches, and you say this person is ten inches taller. That that kind of comparison makes sense. Okay. Here, oh, here's a question. Uh, birth date. Okay. So think about the the day you were born. All right. I don't know what what the, what this is. Right. August seventh. What is it? The year 2002? I don't know. I don't know when people, I don't know what year you, you were born, okay? Uh, All right. Um, so, so think about um, your birthday. Is that a categorical or numeric variable? You should take a vote. What do you guys think? I'm going for categorical. Depends if you write it in numbers or just yeah, Even with numbers like no, the area code, it could be categorical, right? But like if you include the year, then you can say that someone was born after. Or yeah, the number yeah. means has a physical value, even though it is probably discrete. I think if no. you were to turn, if you wanted to include it, you would say how many health. Like, so it, okay, so birth date, birth date, 
Okay. Yeah. The day, the, your point in time in which you entered the world. All right. That is a numeric variable. All right. Even if we write it out and say, my birth date is November 7, 2003. Okay. It feels weird, right? November. When, since when is that a number, right? Or, um, but you think about like the march of time, right? You can think of time as a timeline, right? That's, that's easy to think of, all right? Your birth date is a location on that timeline, okay? And it's no different than a location on a number line, okay? So you can have your location on the timeline, someone else's location on the timeline, and we have meaningful differences. You can say, I am one year and two months older than my brother. I am 31 years younger than my father or something like that, right? These are locations in time and we have distances between them. They are numeric, okay? And quantitative? It's quantitative, yeah, quantitative because it represents kind of this how much or how many it would be like. <laughs> uh, if you think about our timeline, we've, we've, we've picked this arbitrary <laughs> time, okay? Um, you know, of religious uh, significance, right? But, you know, there's kind of like this year zero, right? And I don't know about year zero, but there's like one BC and one, you know, one <laughs> you know, one BC and one BCE and things like that. Uh, or, uh, or yeah, how do we say? Uh, BCE and CE or, you know, BC and AD or, you know, whatever. You, you get this kind of arbitrary point in time. Now it's like, okay, well, how many cycles around the sun <laughs> faster than that? Uh, but it, but again, it's it, you think of a number line, right? You, numbers are just locations on the number line. You have distances between them. That's fine, right? Uh, birth dates. Argue that the area code is also sort of like it distances in a sense. Uh, but but it's not meaningful to measure distances between area two area codes, all right? It's not going to say like, oh, this person is two one two area code and this one's two one three area code, and they're closer to each other than the person who has eight one eight area code and three one zero area code or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. That those those don't represent distances or locations. Yeah. Would it be just easier <clears throat> to use like the age as like quantitative though instead of like specific birthday? Uh but age is only good for that particular day. <laughs> okay. Whereas birth date, like that's gonna be true for the rest of that person's life. Okay, um, like, like the age you are today is only going to be for today, all right? And tomorrow, sorry, you're older, okay? And somebody's going to celebrate a birthday today, happy birthday to whoever that person is, and that person, you know, that number was different yesterday, and it's different today, right? So, so age, sure, that's it's easy for us to kind of think about that, but it's also, yeah, okay. So anyway. That's that's my side. What about someone who has like a birthday on the February twenty eighth or twenty ninth. It doesn't matter. It's just a little point in time. Jeez. It's just a point in time. We we just came up. We just as a globe or whatever, <laughs> we agreed <laughs> on this strange numbering system for the days, right? Mm -hmm. And you think about Star Trek. They go, oh, star star date two seven seven whatever whatever. They just have a different numbering system, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess if you move away from Earth, like, how should you number your days, right? Like, when you live on Mars, not you, but, <laughs> but like, how are you going to keep track of time, right? And, and like, are you going to have a new calendar? I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't you know, this is, this is weird stuff, right? Like, we, everybody, the whole history of humanity has been on Earth, and so it's like, okay, it makes sense to use Earth as a, as a central time frame and stuff, but... Elon Musk will have an answer. Yeah, no, I don't. Well, anyway, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, categorical variables. Okay, I'm t t talking with you. Let me give you your first view coins answer. The letter B. B as in bear. B as in bear. First view quiz answer. Or B as in black, brown, blonde. <laughs> we got hair colors, okay? All right, most of the time when we record categorical data, we just write down the hair color or whatever, whatever the description is. So if it's like, uh, you know, what brand vehicle do you drive? You'll say, oh, I drive whatever, a Ford or a Chevy or a Toyota or whatever, right? You just write that down, okay? Um, but if you want, Right, you can you can code your categorical variables with numbers. Right, some you can have some table somewhere, and you can say, oh, you know what? I'm tired of writing out six letters, so instead I'm going to just write down 
the number three if somebody has blonde hair. Okay, so you can imagine like if you had to like scramble and just like keep track of a whole bunch of things, you might have some kind of internal code in your brain. You just write like code two, code one, code three, or something like that. Okay, um, if you do that, those numbers don't have numeric meaning. They correspond to categories, right? So it doesn't make sense to say code three is more than code one, or and code two is somewhere in between there, or something like that. Okay, um, yeah. If you did it like based off like the color values in the real life. Oh, you know, okay. Is that categorical? Okay, if you have if it has a numeric thing, it can be numeric. So you can say so we have turned colors into numeric, but you need three numbers to represent a color, right? You have a, a zero to a whatever number, two fifty five for red, zero to two fifty five for green, zero for two fifty five for blue. And if you want to do that, you can turn all of your all the colors into this three-dimensional numeric variable. That's possible. Um, you're making your life a little more complicated depending on the situation, okay? And it's probably, right? Um, if you turn everything into zeros and ones, what, what could you? It's, it depends if that zero and one is, an, uh, if it has numeric meaning or not, okay? So, um, if you can have numeric meaning to the zero and one, it it's uh, it will be numeric, um, and if if not, it, it's not okay. Um, so I I will take off huge points. <laughs> all right, in your final project, if you treat categorical variables as numbers, and um, like if you, if you take categorical variables and they get coded as numbers or something. Like if you treat an area code as if it were numeric and you're like, oh, we calculated the mean area code, like that's, all right, you're gonna, you're, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be upset, okay? I'm not like angry, but I'll just, I'll just say oh, I'm disappointed, right? I'm not angry, just disappointed. Okay, <laughs> that's even worse, all right. Um, <laughs> all right. All right, let me get your attention back. Um, on the other hand, you can take a numeric variable and you can turn it into categorical. Uh, so you can take someone's age and you can say, oh, all right, they are a minor, they are an adult, okay? Um, you know, if you think about like advertising, they split you up into different demographic groups, right? Um, or, you know, we take age and we, we have these loose categorical terms, right? We have Gen Z and Millennials and Gen X and Boomers and stuff like that. And, and it's kind of this... Um, segmentation. Yeah, we're segmenting this thing. And it's a little bit, depending on what, what you're doing, maybe the boundaries aren't super clearly defined. But anyway, okay. I, I want to talk about tidy data, so let's, let's keep going here. All right. Um, oh, each table. Okay, so this is more stuff. Okay, this is more on um, the Minneapolis general voting data. After it's been made tidy, we got rid of all of those extra rows that were just kind of summary things. Each row represents a different ward uh, slash precinct, so a different precinct within the ward. So I guess the city's divided into wards, and those wards are divided into precincts. I'm not 100% sure, okay? I'm not from Minneapolis, so again, this is like one of those things where I don't have the expert knowledge, and so there might be like, I don't know, there could be some other hierarchy some other structure, organizational structure that I'm not aware of. I'm assuming it's divided into wards and wards are divided into precincts, um, but I, I'm not 100% sure, okay? Here's a different thing, and this is um, individual ballots, and um, each voter within one ward, ward and the ballot marks the voter's first three choices for mayor. So I guess, um, you know, you're voting for mayor and you could leave it blank, and I guess that goes under vote. Um, or you could vote, you know, for one of these people, and um, and you can do that, and it gets, um, and each row, in this case, is an individual ballot being cast. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this. Jane. So, uh, it says name, so one, one column is name.yob, Jane Polanik, 1974. The next column is uh, sex, F, age, 32, year, 2006. Gun, I don't know what that is. 114.5, okay. Um, the runners, so I think it's one. 
Okay, and then, oh, okay, yeah, 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 uh, for the 10 mile race. Okay, so time, I don't know. Okay, okay, then we have Jane Pool 1940, okay, Jane Pool 1948 F, 55, 2003, 92.7, Jane Pool 1948 F, 56, 2004, 87.3, Jane Pool 1948 F, 57, 2005. Okay, so what's the case here? Yeah, what? Like the runner of the year that they ran? Yeah, each each row represents one runner and uh, the year that they ran the race or something, right? Um, what, did I write the answer to that? I didn't, okay. Um, like what person. should we? Um, just yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is the same person, and and this person ran the race multiple times, and this person's getting older every single year, right? This this kind of makes sense. Um, we could. I I don't know why the name that year year of birth is stuck together, but for whatever reason, this is how the uh, did. So it probably makes sense to split this year of birth um, uh, out uh, as its own column, but that, that's how, what, how it appears here. I think the reason that they have it as one is because if they have multiple people in Jane Yeah, if they have they multiple, the yeah, sure, sure, but it's not a good system because you could also have multiple people named Jane Poole born in 1948. So, you know, if you're going to think of like, okay, we need a unique way to identify people, okay, it should be a, truly a unique way to identify people <laughs> rather than rather than you're know, like hoping to avoid coincidences okay hoping to avoid coincidences is not a good plan <laughs> okay because eventually coincidences happen right again just like the how many like okay i'm gonna have three columns for directors and i'm hoping to avoid the weird coincidence where there's going to be a movie with four directors and it could work for most of your cases, but again, it's not a plan because eventually, probably, something like that will happen. Um, all right, we might have to spend, spread this lecture <laughs> across two days, um, but that's okay. Uh, second view quiz answer is E, E as in elephant, E as in elephant. It, it's a topic worth delving into and, uh, and talking about because um, you might have to restructure your data. So this data would be considered tidy. Uh, this is, I guess, we're looking at like storm data, you know, hurricanes and tropical storms and, um, you know, typhoons and stuff. They're all, they're all the same thing. It's just like which part of the world, like if it was in the Atlantic Ocean, it's a hurricane. And if it's in the Pacific Ocean, it's a typhoon. But, I mean, it's the same weather phenomena. I don't, I'm not sure why they, we call these things different things. Um, anyway, we got uh, the name and... Um, the wind and its pressure and the date and you already saw like you saw part of this for one of your homework assignments right and you had like additional columns like the the type and uh, stuff like that okay so that that data is tidy uh, each column is a variable you have storm name um, wind speed air pressure date and stuff like that each column has its own thing okay here is an example and this is I think some made-up data about some fictional cases of some uh, disease or something, all right? So what do we have? We have the country, France, country DE. DE is Germany, by the way, uh, for Deutschland. It's not like Denmark or I don't know what whether. Um, okay, so uh, DE for Germany and then US um, for the United States, okay? And then um, 2011, 2012, 2013, and what do we have? We have France in 2011 had 7,000 cases. France in 2012 had 6,900 cases. France in 2013 had 7,000 cases, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, what are the cases here? Okay, so, and, or I, I guess, or I mean, not the, not the, sorry. What, what is, how many values do we have? I would argue we have nine values, and these are arranged though, not in a single column, okay? Uh, the variables we have is what country it occurred in, another variable is what year it happened, and then the values that we're actually keeping track of is the count, okay? And so this is arranged not in what we would call a tidy form. How would you have changed that? To make it tidy? That's, that's what today's topic is, okay? Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> Wednesday's Tavi, right? No. Um, but here, I'll give you a preview. Yeah, or we will we'll get into it, and then we'll do more examples on Wednesday. Okay. Here's another example. All right. Here we've got city, New York, city, London, city, Beijing. Right. And then we've got particle size, New York large particles, 23, New York small particles, 14, London large particles, 22, London small particles, 16, Beijing large particles, 121, Beijing small particles, 56, and stuff, right? I mean, um, I, don't, I don't know when, when or if these numbers are even real or um, when they were re recorded and stuff, but, you know, as, as places going through like kind of industrial booms and stuff, there's there's often just more um, more pollution and they realize, oh, you know, we've got to clean this up. Um, okay, um, what are the variables we have here? So, so right now, it's arranged in this form where we have the city and the particle size and the amount. What's another way we could arrange this in a way that makes more sense? Yeah. What you just do is you can have um, each city just has one row. City it gets one row, and then we have a column for large and small. Can be different. Yeah, we have a column for large and a column for small, right? Yeah. But right now, as it is, like I would say, yeah, the variables probably would make more sense as like what city, how many large particles they had, how many small particles they have, and you think about like, okay, how are these numbers stored? They're you know stored in this kind of weird. You got two values, two types of values, or two variables stored in one column. Um, Okay, uh, these data, they're like, okay, uh, uh, the data is, uh, these are like miniature tables that you can kind of import from uh, GitHub, and so this is just the code to get that in, read in. Okay, so so here's the, the storms table, okay, and, uh, and I read it in, and it looks like this, and when you have tidy data, okay, you can just... Um, Reference an entire column using the dollar sign. So I can do, uh, you know, storms dollar sign pressure um, divided by storms dollar sign wind, okay? And I could store it just as a new column called storms dollar sign ratio, right? Or as you guys did in your homework, you could use the mutate, right? And you can do storms mutate, you know, ratio is equal to pressure over wind or something like that, or you just create some new column. Um, using mutate, okay, but but that's you know a nice thing about when it's tidy is when you use mutate or create a new thing, it's going to go through um, and do vectorized operations. Meaning, uh, to get this nine point one five, we did one thousand seven divided by one hundred ten. To get the next number, we did one thousand nine divided by forty five, one thousand five divided by sixty five, and we um, and it's going to match them up and and calculate you know a new value for every single row. You had a question. I was just going to ask, is there an advantage to using this um, function over the other one, over mutate? Yeah, so the advantage of having using the dollar sign is this is built into base R, and you don't have to load in a library like tidyverse. Um, I'm a big fan of the tidyverse, and, you know, it adds a few extra seconds to your, you know, startup time. <laughs> you know, you have to, like, load that library every single time. But uh, I do think the advantages it offers is, is, is pretty great. Um, but yeah, you have uh, you have these vectorized operations like this. Okay, so here are the cases table, and what we want to do is we want to make it tidy. And so I said we have one column for country, one column for which year it occurred in, and then a column for how many cases occurred in that year. Okay, so how many rows? Will this table end up having? What are what will the resulting dimensions of this new table be? Yeah. Give me nine rows. Nine rows, right? Because we got nine values currently spread across three columns here, but we're going to kind of we're we're going to what we call pivot this table, so all of those nine values could end up in one column. Okay. And so uh, so to make these tidy, all right. So what will the resulting dimensions be? We're going to try to arrange it like this, okay? So we're going to end up putting um, uh, France 2011 has 7,000, Germany 2011 has 5,800, mm -hmm. US 2011 has 15,000, so on and so forth. And this is how we're going to re create our uh, rearrange our table or p pivot our table, okay? And so this operation is called pivot longer, right? Because you got you got the data is currently wide and we want to 
put them into one column and make a longer column out of it. Okay, so this is called pivot longer. And what are we doing? Okay, the columns that we are going to pivot, which columns are they? They're the columns 2011, 2012, and 2013. And what this pivot operation does is it takes the column headings and the column headings become the entries into this, um, into this column called year. Okay, and then the values, these nine values, become the entries in this column called n. Okay, so, um, or I guess in our column we call it cases. So, so you can just specify um, cases and then columns, and you have, uh, and here I say take the columns 2011 through 2013, and then I give it just kind of two arbitrary names. Okay, I, I use names that make sense. All right, we're going to say, okay, the column names, the, the names that were at the top, 2011, 2012, 2013, those are going to get gathered into one column, and that column we're going to call, we're going to put those names into the column called year, okay? And then the values, they get gathered into a column or pivoted into a column, and we're going to call that column cases. But th these things here, the year and the cases, that's, that's an arbitrary thing. We could, we could name them whatever we want, so like bad names, but you could, all right? You could call it when it happened, all right? And you can call it how many, right? These are not ideal names because, you, well, you don't want to put spaces in your column names, okay? If you really need to like have a space, use an underscore, okay? Because otherwise, like just trying to reference a thing, you got to use these back ticks or escape out the spaces. It just makes headaches, right? So um, same thing with like naming your files and stuff. I highly recommend using underscores rather than spaces. I know like on all of your systems, they all support spaces in your file names, but just recommendation, put underscores, yeah. What is the difference between names two and values two? So um, when, we, when we pivot our data, the, the column headings end up in one column, and the values over here end up in another column. What do you want to call those two columns that you're going to pivot your data into, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and and so the the column headings go into the you, whatever name you want to call this. Here we're calling it year. That's going to be the names too. The values, whatever you want to call this, is going to be the uh, values two column. So you have the names two. So it's just whatever you want to put on this. If you don't specify anything, I I, I think it just they call it names and values. Is the order in as well? Yeah, uh, it's always get, well. Default names, I mean, when you specify arguments, you could say values to this and names to this, and it'll yeah. figure it out. But uh, but yeah, default, it's going to be names names and values. Okay. Yeah. Is there a way to go backwards? Because Absolutely. That's, that's, the other, that's the other side. Yeah. So you have pivot longer, and you have a reverse operation. What do you think it's going to be called? Pivot wider. Pivot wider. Okay. Wow. All right. Okay. Then that's uh, here. We're going to fast forward. Okay. So we have this thing, right? The pollution. And we have the col the values in one column right now, and we want to pivot these values from one column into two columns. So we're pivoting it wider, okay? And and that's that's what we're going to do, right? So we're going to have one row for New York, one row for London, one row for Beijing, and this is going to be pivot wider, okay? Um, I, I guess we're going to have to save that <laughs> for Wednesday, just because I have a few more examples of like a little bit of like pivot longer. Right, so because there's a few things that we're like, oh, you know, we have such a toy example that it's like, oh yeah, of course this makes sense. But then, in in real life, you often have your data; it's a little bit messier and stuff. And you know, what happens if I said pivot longer? Uh, okay, you know what? Let's let's save this. We'll save this till Wednesday. We'll we'll, we'll do more of this. I, I, I want to make sure this all makes sense. Let me give you your last view quiz answer, and then the remaining time we're gonna I'm gonna have you guys um, find your groups. Or work on that. Okay. So uh, last answer for today is the letter A. Do I need to give you your last two? You gave me the, the second one. You did. I did give you the second one. <laughs> oh. oh, that's all right. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you in secret. All right. Okay. Last answer today is A. A as an apple. Third answer is A. A as an apple. Okay. So we'll um, we'll I will end my lecture here, but don't leave. Okay. I want you to spend the last few minutes. If you haven't found a group. Um, just talk to neighbors and see if you have common interests or something. Just find a group. If you already have a group, why don't you guys start making arrangements for like when you guys are going to start meeting up? Okay. All right. So we'll we'll put this on hold and we'll see you on Wednesday.